Good morning. And welcome to New Covenant United Methodist Church on this uh, special Sunday. This is Christ the King Sunday. But today we are doing something a little bit different. We are doing our Hanging of the Green service during the course of our regular worship service. Uh, the tradition here at New Covenant is to do this as an evening service. And we are doing it in the course of the regular worship service at my request. <laughs> um, so we hope that this will be a wonderful time of worship leading into our Advent season next week. Um, thank you to Audrey Payne, who is the chair of our worship committee, for all of her hard work, wherever she is right now. And to everyone who has helped uh, prepare for this service, who will be pr uh, participating in the service today. It's a wonderful time of preparing our sanctuary and preparing our hearts for the Advent season to come. So just a couple announcements that I want to uh, mention this morning. Uh, today is the last Sunday to bring donations for warm. Uh, and if you still want to donate something and have not been able to get them here, you have until Thursday of this week to bring them to the church. <coughs> If you are interested in buying a quilt ticket, you need to see Linda Dunn if you're interested in buying tickets for the quilt that the So What's are um, auctioning off. And this coming Thursday at 7 o'clock p.m. here in the sanctuary, we will have our annual charge conference with our district superintendent, Edlin Cowley. It is a time when we celebrate what we have accomplished this year and we look forward to what we will be doing in 2024. Everyone is invited to attend and we hope that you will, if you're able, be here Thursday night at seven o'clock. There will be no jam for the youth this Wednesday night, but there will be, um, you will be gathering on Thursday evening before the charge conference at six o'clock to eat pizza here and then uh, you are being asked to join us for the charge conference at 7 o'clock. Thank you to everyone who has purchased poinsettias in honor or memory of someone. They will be coming into the sanctuary during our service today. Um, again, thank you for all who have, have purchased those. They, we have not had here at New Covenant live poinsettias in several years, and so um, we thank you for those who have uh, made those purchases this year. And then Cindy has one more announcement to make. Good morning, New Covenant. Good morning. So this coming Friday, December 1st, our youth have been asking for some time now for a lock-in. And we're gonna have a lock-in here Friday night at the church. And I have, we have some activities planned. We're gonna have midnight breakfast. And uh, from, we're gonna meet at seven and go home at around 7.30 the next morning. We haven't ironed that out yet. Um, and we've had a generous donation of someone who's provided the breakfast food. And Dale and I would love to have any of you come during the course of that 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. time to hang out with the youth. So you are invited, encouraged to come and spend an hour. Uh, we're going to have a, uh, an escape room uh, game, and we're going to paint ceiling tiles. That has been a tradition for our high schoolers to put in the youth room. Um, I think there's probably going to be some hide and seek going on. And of course, midnight breakfast. So if you're interested, please see me and let me know that you would like to come for an hour to hang out with the kids and, and just be a presence. And having someone help serve breakfast uh, and get that all heated up would be amazing. So that's this Friday, December 1st, beginning at 7 p.m. until around 7 a.m. <coughs> the next morning. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. If that is all of the announcements, we again welcome you, whether you are worshiping here with us in person or worshiping online, we hope that this service of Hanging of the Greens will be a special time for you again as we prepare our hearts and prepare our sanctuary for the coming of the Advent season. So let us now begin 
our worship service. Today is Christ the King Sunday, the last Sunday of the Christian year. In ancient Jewish and Christian tradition, the new day, the new week, the new year begins as the sun disappears at the horizon. Therefore, we begin celebrating the holy season of Advent as we decorate our church and our homes. Why do we do this? What does it mean? During the Advent season, we prepare for the one who has come, whom we expect to come, and who will come again. We prepare our hearts and make room for the Messiah. The Advent season is a time for reflection and preparation, but its mood is joyful. Advent proclaims the revelation of God's love as expressed in Christ's birth in a humble stable his sacrificial death on the cross, and his victorious resurrection. It points to the hope of Christ coming again as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Advent makes innkeepers of us all, asking each of us to make room for the arrival of Christ the King. In the hanging of the greens, we share with Christians throughout the ages the memory and anticipation of Christ's coming. We decorate our church and homes with the symbols of love, joy, hope, and peace. Why do we do this? To tell the story again and then to proclaim, Jesus is born, God is with us. body or in spirit and join us for the call to worship. How shall we prepare this house for the coming of Jesus the King? With the placement of pyramids and banners. How shall we prepare this house for the coming of Jesus? God with us, our Emmanuel. With the promise of light through the advent breathe. How shall we prepare this house for the coming of Jesus? the Savior of the world. With holly, berries, and poinsettias, symbolizing his passion, death, and resurrection. How shall we prepare this house for the coming of Jesus, the Lamb of God? With an empty stable that waits. How shall we prepare this house for the coming of Jesus, the Son of God? With the lifting of our voices in praise. How shall we prepare this house for the coming of Jesus, Lord of all creation? With the hope of tomorrow, found in a simple evergreen tree. How shall we prepare this house for the coming of Jesus, the Logos, the very Word? With the Christmas symbols for his many names. How shall we prepare this house for the coming of Jesus, the light of the world? By filling this place, our homes and our world with light. How shall we prepare this house for the coming of Jesus, the eternal Christ? By hearing again the words of the prophets who foretold the saving work of God. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. 
All glory to God in the highest. Our opening hymn is Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. From Isaiah 40, 3 through 5. Thunder in the desert, prepare for God's arrival. Make the road straight and smooth, a highway fit for our God. Fill in the rocks, and God's bright glory will shine and everyone will see it. Yes, just as God said. The pyramids are changed with each new season of the church year, with Advent marking the beginning of the new year. Like the cycles of the church year, we are reminded that God is first and last the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. In the early days of Christian worship, Christ's kingship was reflected in both purple for Lent and Advent for the mood being somber. Many Christian churches now use blue to speak of the kingship of Christ when the occasion is joyful. At Advent, we wait with joyful anticipation and celebration for our coming Christ. We place the Advent pyramids as we watch and wait and hope for a proclamation from the angels and we sing.
Jeremiah 23, 5 through 6. Time's coming, God's decree, when I'll establish a truly righteous David branch, a ruler who knows how to rule justly. He'll make sure of justice and keep people united. In his time, Judah will be secure again and Israel will live in safety. This is the time, this is the name they'll give him, God who puts everything right. The Advent wreath is a symbol of preparation. The lighting of a new candle each week reminds us that something is happening, but more is yet to come. With increasing brightness from the candles, we experience the light of the world and find hope in the coming of Jesus. The circle of evergreens reminds us of the everlasting covenant offered in the birth of Jesus. The center wooden stump reminds us of the stump of Jesse that will bear fruit for the house of David. The four candles symbolize hope, peace, joy, and love. We prepare as we sing. is it was our pains he carried and all the things wrong with us he took the punishment and that made us whole through his bruises we get healed we're all like sheep who've wandered off gotten lost we've all done our own thing gone our own way and God has piled all our sins everything we've ever done wrong on him, on him. Holly and berries remind us of the day we call Good Friday. The early Christians placed them in their windows to indicate that Christ had entered the home. Along with pine and fir, evergreens, because they never change color. They are ever green, ever alive even in the midst of winter. They symbolize the unchanging nature of our God, and they remind us of the everlasting life that is ours through Christ Jesus. Their pointy leaves are like the crown of thorns, and the red berries, the blood of Jesus. As we place the holly and berries, let us rejoice in the coming of Jesus our Savior, and sing.
from Numbers 24, verse 17. I see him, but not right now. I perceive him, but not right here. A star rises with Jacob. The poinsettia, or the flower of the holy plant, is a plant referred to in Mexico, the most popular advent flower. Legend tells us of a girl, commonly called Pita or Maria. She was too poor to provide a gift for the celebration of Jesus' birthday. She was inspired to gather weeds from the roadside, place them in front of the church altar. Crimson blossoms sprouted from the weeds and became poinsettias. The star-shaped tin leaves reminds us of the star which shone that first Christmas. We also remember that sadness mixed with joy. The color of the flower is blood red, reminds us of sometimes forgotten part of the story which made it necessary for Mary, Joseph, and Jesus to flee to Egypt. You are invited to join us now as we sing Through seven. While they were there, the time came for Mary to give birth. She gave birth to a son, her firstborn. She wrapped him in a blanket and laid him in a manger, because there was no room in the inn. Possibly the best known Christmas decorating tradition is the scene of Bethlehem, where the birth took place. Mary and Joseph watched in wonder as visitors came searching for their child. The manger reminds us that Jesus was born in a barn because people would not make room in their hearts to hold the Son of God. Jesus, who was born in this most simple beginning, has compassion on all God's children, from the poorest to the richest. As we set out the nativity, we sing together.
Psalm 96, 1 through 4. Sing God a brand new song. Earth and everyone in it, sing. Sing to God. Worship God. Shout the news of His victory from sea to sea. Take the news of His glory to the lost. News of His wonders to one and all. For God is great and worth a thousand hallelujahs. The actual origin of caroling as a part of the Christmas celebration is unknown. Several countries have claimed to be the birthplace of the custom. From the first, music of some kind was part of the church festivals in honor of the birth of Jesus. We know that caroling existed in Germany in the 15th century because Martin Luther wrote that when Christmas was celebrated, he went with others from house to house, village to village, singing popular Christmas carols. We could safely assume that caroling was first done by the choir of angels who sang, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. The singing of carols is one of the greatest joys of the season. So let us now sing. Let us now go to God in prayer. Amazing God, we thank you for the gift of this day and for the opportunity to worship you and to come to you in this time of prayer. We bring to you our many joys and concerns and name them in our hearts before you now. Oh God, you have allowed us the privilege all during this year to walk the pathways of hope with Jesus. From your incarnation in Christ at the Nativity to his accept acceptance of the ministries to which you called him. From the magnificent lessons about caring and compassion as he trod the roads leading to Jerusalem. From the encounters with hostile people to the cries of those in need and to his crucifixion and resurrection, we have been blessed to learn from our Savior and have our lives transformed by his redeeming love. Bring the joy of this day into our hearts. Flood our lives with your words of hope that our ministries may grow, glow with delight at serving you by serving others. Bless this church as we grow and continue to learn what you would have us do. As we prepare for the season of Advent, cause us to be a haven of peace and hope in this world that is bound in such anger and fear. For we ask these things in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is from Micah 5, verse 2. But you, Bethlehem, David's country, the runt of the litter, from you will come the leader who will shepherd, rule Israel. He'll be no upstart, no pretender. His family tree is ancient and distinguished. In ancient times, the cedar was seen as a tree of royalty. The first use of cedar or fir at the Christmas tree was a medieval German paradise place held on the church steps during Advent. A fir tree was decorated with apples and represented Eden's tree of life. Later, the trees were brought into the homes with paper flowers and nuts added for decoration. We place this tree in the sanctuary, just as you may have a tree at home, representing the tree of life found not only in Edom, but also in New Jerusalem. Our trees, like the tree of life, are a symbol of Christ, who reigns as king forever, offering us eternal life. time in our worship service, I invite the ushers to come forward as we return to God a portion of what we have received from God. Let us pray. Shepherd of love, Transform these gifts into nourishment for a hungry world. May they offer shelter from the storms of life. May they bring kindness and compassion to the lost and the lonely. Transform us even as you transform these gifts, that we might be your hands and feet in the world. Amen.
children come forward. Can you sit right here for me? Good? Did y'all have a good Thanksgiving? Yeah, it was good for me too. So, do y'all know that today is hanging of the greens? This is the day when we set our church and, whoa, scoot up here so you don't do that again, buddy. Thank you. This is the time of year where we get our, prepare our church for Advent and the coming of Christ the baby, right? So each year at this service, we get to decorate our Christmas tree, right? But here, it's not really a Christmas tree, it's a chrismon tree. Do you know what a chrismon is? It's a decoration that we use, and each of the chrismons is a monogram for Jesus Christ. Do you know what a monogram is? Nope, that's a good guess though. That's a good guess, but it's not a monogram typically is like we label things, right? And I brought an example. This is a monogram. It has my initials C-H-W, Cindy Hart Wolf. Actually, it's Cynthia, but I don't ever go by Cynthia. But that's a monogram. That puts this name on this and says it's mine. So Chrismons is two parts, Chris means Christ, and mon means monogram. And that's what these are. These are chrismons, right? And the symbols mean different things, and they've been passed down for centuries and centuries, and they remind us of Christ. They remind us of the birth, the life, the death, and the resurrection, and the reign of Christ. All of those things in these little chrismons. So, every year we do this, and I think, I know everything there is to know about chrismons, but then every year, God shows me something new. Isn't that pretty cool? So let's look at some of these chrismons, and um, would you do me a favor? Would you get that little basket for me, the, the red one? Bring it over here for just a minute. All right, so let's look at some of these. Um, actually, we need this one. We're going to use these right now. Okay, so like there are three crosses in the in the chrismons. This is the Latin cross. And it looks pretty much like the cross we have up on our our altar there, right? So that's the, the Latin cross. You want to put that one up there? Put that on the tree. Alright, the next one is the tau. And it looks like a T. Whoops. It looks like a T, right? That's the Tau cross. Can you put that on the tree? You want to help, help uh, Dalton put that on the tree? Be careful. Don't let him step off the edge, buddy. Good job. Thank you. We're not going to go through all of these, but we're going to do a couple. This is the crown. It's it is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Can you put that one up? Well, can you sit down? And you can do the next one. And this one, it looks like a triangle, right? But you know what? This represents the Trinity. It represents the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. You want to put that one on the tree? This is the last one I'm going to do. This is the Star of David. Hold on, hold on. Don't get grabbing, don't get grabbing. Let me, let me get my spiel first. It is two triangles put together. And it has six points which represent the six days of creation. Can you put that one on the tree? Back up just one more. So 
There's a lot more symbols and they all represent Christ on our tree. And we're going to take a few minutes to decorate our tree. Wait just a minute. Wait just a minute. We got to be patient. I know it's not in your vocabulary. <laughs> but I would also ask Riley, would you come up and help me with one of the baskets? And we would like to invite each one of you to come up and get a chrismon that these chrismons and these baskets were handmade by members of our church, one main member of our church, and they are beautiful. And so um, I invite you all to come up and uh, get a chrismon and place it on the tree. Just stand right there at the bottom. Do you want to hold the basket? Okay, can you stand right over there and give everybody a chrismon? Why don't you stand over here, Declan? No, you had this way to read. I saw that. <laughs> Dante, Dante, go with Mimi.
1 John 1 through 5, 9 through 14. I'm sorry, John 1, 1 through 5, 9 through 14. The Word was first, the Word present to God, God present to the Word. The Word was God, in readiness for God from day one. Everything was created through Him. Nothing, not one thing, came into being without Him. What came into existence was life, he, and the life was light to live by. The life light blazed out of the darkness. The darkness couldn't put it out. The life light was the real thing. Every person entering life, he brings into light. He was in the world, the world was there through him, and yet the world didn't even notice. He came to his own people, but they didn't want him. But whoever did want him, who believed he was, who he claimed and would do what he said, he made to be their true selves, their child of God selves. These are the God begotten, not blood begotten, begotten, not flesh begotten, not sex begotten, 